Thank you for staying with us. This is Steel Plus Politics, and I still have uh, Dotton Hassan. And joining me in the studio is Gideon Logan. He is a legal practitioner, just as Dotton Hassan. It's good to have you join us, gentlemen. Now, um, Mr. Logan, before you came in, we were talking about what the president has said about young people in Nigeria. And this is not the first time someone in government has said, uh, under this administration, that Nigerians should not be leaving Nigeria. They should stay back in Nigeria to build Nigeria. But my question is, are these young people even given the opportunity to build the Nigeria that we're asking them to build? Are you a young person? I'll are you be... a youth, sir? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Good I'm an youth. <clears throat> I'll be absolute, and my response will be no. And I'll go back to my person, for example, by God's grace today, we uphold the good name of the family because my parents took the pain to educate us. They gave us what parents should give, enabling family environment, the encouragement. My father had 10 children and only one did not graduate by choice. This is so today, <clears throat> we have peace in the family, we have prosperity in the family. So I am disappointed in the government of Nigeria and I'll pick it all the way from 1960 when we gained independence. We have not done anything to encourage the younger generation. And it is worse now. But you see, you and my parents and their <clears throat> likes would say that you actually had a better opportunity in your days compared to today. So I'm trying to understand where you're saying that since then, government has not done anything. Because it seems like you had a better chance. are created and sustained. There's what we call sustainable development, and that has not happened in my country. And I also pick my argument from what we have right now. It's quite frightening. I have pictures, I have videos, I have records of what the youth of Nigeria are subjected to now. And for those who live in Lagos, I will ask that you take a ride from the customs end of Bank Anthony Way as if you are going to the local airport, and Maryland, passing through Sheraton, you will weep for Nigeria. You see young ones hawking on the street. Even though <clears throat> there are warnings there that street trading is an offense, punishable with a fine of 90,000 Naira, the government has not even been able to summon enough courage to implement these laws. And of course, severally, the government has admitted the failure in making way for the younger ones. Even though we, we had the not too young to run, if you ask me, with the kind of politics we play in Nigeria now, I don't think I belong to the category of the young one that we want to show up at the polling booth. Given what we had in Bayesa and Kogi State most recently. <clears throat> and really, I'm, I'm just appealing that we look out of the window, like I always say, and check some other countries. And I will bring up some comparisons now. I was doing a study on the modern UAE, and one of the things Sheikh Zaid, that translated UAE from a desert to a paradise that we have today, did was to invest in people. He said that wealth is not many, but developing people, and he did a lot in education, in providing basic facilities, and that is why many of us are not surprised, for instance, that Dubai, which is in the UAE, uh, was one of the, I think, fourth most visited locations on Earth by year 2018. So you need to provide for the younger ones, and you talk basically about education, and you and I know that the rating of Nigeria in education is nothing to write home about. It, it can be better. And I always advise the best time to have planted a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is now. I was quite happy when recently, I think the Chief of Army Staff even raised a concern and some well-meaning Nigerians about the Almanjiri system that has really given us a, a, a pool of young ones that are highly volatile. He, he termed it as uh, exactly. a time bomb. <clears throat> and if you look at the direction of the global economy, 
It's an intelligence-driven economy, you see. And that is why, if you look at the UAE that I just mentioned, they have a Minister of Artificial Intelligence. In Dubai, they have the Academy of Artificial Intelligence. So we need to expose our young ones. But why do you to... think, Barista Logo, <clears throat> that 30-something years down the line, we're still somewhat in the same place? Because I remember years ago, I was doing some digging into past political campaign messages. And it hit me that some of the things that the Zeeks of Nigeria campaigned about we're still hearing politicians in 2018 and 2019 campaigning with the same thing. So I'm trying to understand what exactly is the problem? Why are we still stagnant? Is it us, the people? Because you know what they say, <coughs> the, people are, uh, the government is a reflection of the people. So what exactly do you as a person think is the problem? Paucity of resourceful leadership. Because Nigeria does not like resources. I think about 4.5% of the world resources are domiciled in Nigeria. But it's one thing to have resources, another thing to be resourceful about it. And I have always thrown this challenge. Give the resources in Nigeria to another nation. I mean, we get a different narrative. And it's because the leadership also appears not to appreciate the value of education. I have made reference to South Korea in the past where the education system is focused on productivity. All right, you can mention China, you can mention, and quite a number of our leaders, many of them send their children to school abroad. That tells us something. They don't even have faith in the Project Nigeria. And I'm still trying to evaluate the education sector. I'm not even going to the health sector. It's a total failure there. You see, because if you have monitoring the news like we do recently, you see their children graduating in the UK, in Canada, in the US. Is, is this something to be proud about? No. So if you have such alternatives, you may not be interested in developing local content. So when the president said that the youth should stay back and build their motherland, I quite agree with him. But the youth should not also be intimidated. They should be given the space. And if you ask me now with the level of violence, insecurity, poverty in Nigeria, we need to quickly act on them. I still throw this challenge. There was a report earlier this year that within the first seven months of 2019, 1,460 human beings or thereabout were killed. So I did a quick mental calculation. I divided 1,460 by seven. I think it gave me 208 human beings killed in Nigeria. And we deny the banditry we deny the kidnapping, we deny the serial crime that we have in the land. So if you put all this together, I mean, do we have the enabling environment? Okay. And that is a huge challenge. And again, we don't have all the time to begin to ask questions. What have we budgeted to education? Oh, that's a whole of what importance is it? That's also, a whole if we don't value too. it, we will not invest in it. All right, I'll come back to you. Um, Dr. You're a young person. I'm going to keep emphasizing that. You have tried to run for office. You've, you <clears throat> have your hands in many places. He's told us what he thinks is the problem. What do you think? Do you think that we're also part of the problem as young persons? Like I said, the leaders are a mirror of society. What have we have young, as young people done to hold governments responsible to us or are we supposed to take the bull by its heart? What exactly have we done to change our situation, aside from running away from the country? Well, I, I still want to admit that uh, uh, the lack of willpower to deliver uh, due um, expectation of the people when it comes to delivery of dividend of democracy, of what ought to be, and not where we are at now. Because where we are at now, uh, is a sorry state, is a precarious situation that uh, really, really embarrassing that government will, will, will on, on its own volition, commit a lot of atrocity in killing the same democracy they, they tend to espouse. And it's quite unfortunate that the youths are not even orientated on the positive 
of building a nation. We have a lot of negative orientation that have now escapulated our uh, space. And today, the information are dissecting and, you know, the, the, you know, throwing us off balance every day. He has said it all, insecurities there, the education, lack of willpower to do the needful. Not that we don't know what is good for us. Mm -hmm. An average Nigerian man knows the right from the, from the, from its wrong. But quite unfortunately, that positive of leadership, as you have rightly said, is one of our major arbitrals. And a lot, of, a lot of young Nigerians <coughs> go outside the shores of Nigeria. And I'm not also trying to make a case of people running away. I mean, it's a choice. Why I are you not making a case for them? I, I, if I'm, you find yourself in a hostile environment, again, we are created again, to enjoy again, life. I'm not, I'm not making a case for either. <laughs> they, I mean, there is a scale here, and everybody has a right to choose either yeah. side. But I'm saying. The average young person in Nigeria goes anywhere, even some, somewhere like Chad, as close as Chad or Niger, and is very successful at whatever they find themselves you know, doing. But within the country, it's a totally different case. And I wonder, Nigerians are just, just over the weekend, all the guys who were winning things were Nigerians. So how come? It is so difficult for us we, to do this we, within. It is not as difficult. But as easier you, to do it no, without. It is not as difficult as you think. The same spirit that makes them thrive outside the country, the same spirit we have here. But there's a killer syndrome here that will never allow you to grow. And that is the policy of the government, the policy of the social policy where, where around Where is this us. policy? They, is it, is they, it a they, written they, document? Is they, it no, a no, spoken they, thing? They, no, no, we have the written document. Look at it now. We don't have a people's constitution that give larger um, um, room for you to grow, for, the, for good governance. It's more or less that we are in a shrouded, we are, we are in a shrouded uh, uh, system. Everybody just says anything goes. No. If you want to get it right, let us lay the bed rightly. The way we've laid our bed, that's why we are the way we are, uh, as we are. So as you're agreeing that young people are part of the problem? We have that same spirit to develop this country. Are you saying that young people are part of the problem? Because no, no. every time an issue comes up, whatever the issue is, the reactions you see cut across three lines. And I'm talking about young people. I'm not even no. talking about elderly people. It, it either divides these young people along religious ethnic or political lines are we part of the problem who are the who are the authors of these lines of thinking <laughs> ethnicity religion political are they not the big wigs who have benefited so much from i, I throw it but if we think that they're the problem why are we still towing those lines they should be right models young ones need models i mean my great brother my great sister an election took place in the uk Within the last one week, as if no election took place. I mean, that is fantastic. Bloodless, you know, seamless, and yet even with the 286 billion naira we spent on the 2019 election, you saw the violence and everything. So there is this role for modeling. I like to use the aircraft example. You're flying from Lagos to New York. You may meet the pilot and the, and the, and the crew at the uh, boarding gate, then you get to the aircraft, they move to the left, you move to the right. You have no business how that aircraft gets to New York. Your business is to enjoy your flight, the Eustace uh, attend to you and things. What is the role of leadership? If we keep shifting the blame to the young ones, and unfortunately, many of them benefited so much from the government. Scholarships, jobs waiting for them, different kinds of bursaries that they cannot provide for the younger ones. I mean, let's face the reality. It's a, it's a failure. Well, of And that is my opinion, and I stand All by right. it. All right. Leadership is to show direction. You know, right. we have transformational right. leadership. Right. So, you know, we have, to go we have transactional leadership. We need transformational leadership in Nigeria. All right, we need to go. Uh, we need to go. Unfortunately, this conversation could span for two more hours, but... It's a conversation that needs to continue, whether we like it or not. But we have to go for a break. Of course, the continued, uh, continued incarceration of Omoyele Shore, a convener of revolutionary protests, is up for discussion next. Stay with us. You don't want to go anywhere. <laughs>